All right, Neela. So let me ask you a question. Okay. What is this Amy Lee 33? Okay, so she's like a YouTuber. Well, this is how I know her. She's like a YouTuber and she does Minecraft videos and like Roblox videos. And yeah, I basically watch them and she's cool. And so do my friends. So yeah, they watch her. Somebody on our show right now that maybe do you want to ask a question? Oh, uh, how do you like know her? And like, <laughs> how did you meet her? Um, our. Yeah, so we're starting, right? We're good. We're oh, starting we're, we're live. starting. Yeah. We're live. All right. Oh, we're doing okay. it live. <laughs> I wasn't clear. We just kind of jumped in really quick, and yeah. I was like, "What's going on?" All right, okay. So, um, wow, yeah, Amy Lee, thirty-three. I, I didn't know who she was, and she contacted me like years ago. She saw our family on the show Wife Swap. My family and I were on that show probably I don't know two two three years ago. Three years ago, actually. Oh, and my. She, I have to check I know. that out. It was crazy. It was insane. And uh, so Amy wrote to me, like, right after the show aired. And she just said, hi, I love the show. I love your family. I would love to connect with you and get to know you more. And so um, she was going through a troubling time and needed some support. So I offered her some coaching, basically. We connected that way. We just hit it off. And um, she ended up moving in with us. <laughs> And we adopted her, basically. She became my, like, soul sister, but I really think of her like a real sister. And, um, yeah, she's been part of our family ever since. So we've done a lot of crazy, crazy things together since that time. We've traveled, oh, my gosh, to L.A., to Disney, to New York City. We've had a wonderful time connecting. But um, Wow. Yeah. I On a good day, I consider Neela like a real daughter on a good day. <laughs> right, Neela? Right. Yeah. So so if you guys have, have not figured out, uh, this is Dana Martin, yeah. who wrote the book. Is I want to make sure I got your title right. Is it okay. Radical Unschooling? What's the full title of the book? Radical Unschooling, A Revolution Has Begun. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, uh, and on this show, I'm sorry, I, I had a little bit of... Oh, oh, our names are switched right now. Okay, so Dana, right now <laughs> on the video, you are now Neela Marie. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Neela, grown. And, yes, and Neela, you are Dana Martin. Oh, yay. I'm, I'm going to switch it. <laughs> if you're watching the live stream, I am switching them around, right? I want to thank uh, my, my co-host for Lozilla, Andrew Marich Bodie, for, uh, for letting me know. Uh, that the names were switched. I didn't even think to check the labels. You never, when when you're doing Skype, people who do these OBS things, they know. When you're doing Skype, you never know where's the person going to show up, <laughs> which window is going to. Now, before we get started here, going to actually play a little video here to prepare you for what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about unschooling, and we're going to be talking. Uh, from I, I think, Dana, this is a really unique perspective. I don't know how often you get to do this on a show. You're actually going to be talking to someone who is considering taking the unschooling route. I've already considered it for her and said yes. <laughs> well, I, I mean, but she has the choice. So this is going to be an interesting show. And before we get, we're going to go ahead. This, is, this video is about two minutes long. Dana and Neela, you guys won't hear it. So... You'll just have to trust me when I start talking that the video is over. Let me just, can I just say one thing before you sure. start the video? Sure. That this was the, that's so weird. This is the video that Wife Swap saw that they asked us for before deciding to have us on the show. So this video is what sold us to Wife Swap to have us on. So wow. isn't that funny? That is wow. a weird, yeah. that's, that's, <laughs> that I actually yeah, picked it because I thought it had some really good salient points for not just what a little bit of what homeschooling is, but what the effect of homeschooling is, this, which is what I really like. I like effects. I like seeing what happens. All right. So we're going to go ahead and play the video. We'll be back in two minutes. Enjoy. I think our neighbors would describe us as strange. I think um, they, they kind of walk by their homes and look over at us with with weird glances sometimes and you know while all of their kids are getting on the bus in school our kids are sleeping um, they stay up till 3 in the morning and they wake up at probably you know 10 or 11 and start their day when most kids are you know getting home from school so I think we live a really unique life and I never pictured 
my life to be like this. This wasn't something I planned. It just really authentically happened. And it feels really right to us to, to be in a partnership with our kids. There's no hierarchy in our house. Nobody is an authority. We are all equal. And although we're leaders, my husband and I, Joe, are leaders in our family, we definitely um, respect everything the kids say and ask for. So our role in life is to help our kids get whatever they want in life, more of it. And we facilitate their learning. And in doing so, it leads to a really joyful partnership. I think what you're modeling and what we're doing is that we're, you know, we're not raising worker bees. We're not raising yes men or kids that jump through hoops or take orders. We're raising free thinking entrepreneurs by living this way and you're totally modeling that to them. And um, our kids have had their own businesses since they were four years old from chocolate businesses to lemonade stands to Etsy stores and, and you name it. So I think you living this life has really inspired the kids to to know that they never have to work for somebody else. They can make money off just pursuing their interests and passions in life like you have. I think obedience is old school. It's, it's uh, imposing rules on your kids is a lazy form of parenting to me. Rules are, rules are for the lazy parent. We find win-win situations with all of our uh, dynamics with our kids and uh, strict no. And I think that uh, discipline is um, really disrespectful. I think that what we do is we're good people in this world and we model like how to be good people. We model how to treat others and we treat our kids with respect and kindness and and from our perspective respect gets respect and kindness is a uh, when you're kind the kids are kind and we're back with dana martin at radical unschooling dana before we begin where where can people find more information about you um you can visit my website danamartin.com or you can find me on facebook or you could find our family youtube channel it's called the sparkling martins I have checked out the Sparkling Martins, and I have a criticism of your video channel. Okay. You need to make more videos. Sorry. <laughs> you don't make I enough know, videos, well, okay? Well, the thing is, let me just explain. Let me explain, <laughs> because this is really important. I get messages from kids, like, on a daily basis that we don't put out more videos. But because of the philosophy that we live, I will never force my kids to do it or even talk them into oh, yeah, it. And yeah. They, and, yeah, I'm just well, they, they just. Them. Oh, I yeah. know, I know, but I'm just saying they, they don't want to. There's been so many times where we were like, come on, guys, let's make a video, and they're just not into it. They, they're Tiffany and Ivy are kind of really showing interest and wanting to do it again, so we are moving more toward that again, but they wanted a break. It was really intense, and, like, once we started, um, like, collaborating with Amy Lee, and we started, it started getting so huge that we couldn't keep up with, like, just the people that would contact us and, and the opportunities and the collaborations and it just kind of started to take over life and the kids began to feel like okay we need to step back from the the spotlight <laughs> for right. a while yeah 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 and, and and neely you you make videos you do youtube videos yeah so, so you know for uh, for you know for what that's like but you you make a lot of videos but you actually you just enjoy doing it right yeah now uh dana as you know as I, I think I explained to you, my daughter is considering right now she goes to public school and she actually goes to public school by choice. It's not it's I, I'm trying to do peaceful parenting, so I, I'm not going to tell her that's it. You've got to do unschooling, which would kind of defeat the purpose of unschooling. <laughs> so right. if uh, starting off here, could you give us like maybe the the top three arguments that people give you and we can do one at a time obviously the top three arguments that people give you why it is that you should keep your kid in public school and why that's not true um well i think the number one argument is socialization yeah that's the number it, one but... yeah and usually people they have different meanings when they when they say that you know like they're, they're, some people think that if your child's not in school, that you're keeping them in the house all day away from the real world. And I mean, that's not true at all in our case. It's not true with, with unschoolers in general that I know. So our kids are out in the real world every day, connecting with people of all different ages. They're not age segregated like in public school. So, I mean, that argument is just ridiculous, but you know, you have to be patient when you're an advocate and answer it over and over and over again. It's kind of like for, 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 for the anarchists, uh, which I'm one, the, the, the Marodes argument. You've got to you've got, you've got to deal with that one all the time. Neela, yep. you you've actually expressed 
uh, some some. Could you uh, express like what are some of your trepidations as far as uh, your? Because you've actually expressed that very concern, right? Socialization, right? Yeah. So, what what kind of socialization are you looking for? I guess like friends mainly. I feel like I'm not gonna have friends if like I'm unschooled or like homeschooled. When yeah. You, when you think friends. <laughs> what pops in your mind? Like, is it a certain age group? And not really a certain age group. I guess like when you're in public school, the eighth graders and like the older grades do look down on you, so you kind of can't be friends with them. But some are nice. Some of them. What are some of the things, Dana, that you do to get your kids out there? Uh... Or, or, or I, I mean, I, I, w I, w I would imagine that you wouldn't say it's what you do. It's, it's what you facilitate. Like, you follow right. where they lead, sort of, right? Yeah, I mean, every child has a different social need. You know, they, they have different needs for connecting with other people. So I think it's important, depending upon the individual child, what you do. And I also, like with Neela, I mean, I think where you've already been in school for a while, it's hard to imagine being away from your friends that you've made. Yeah. Them. You know, I can totally understand once you're already kind of integrated into that society and that community, the thought of leaving those people that one of the main reasons why you love going or you enjoy going is probably to see your friends there. Right. Yeah. 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 So I totally understand why that might be a hard thing to think about. Do you guys do a lot of stuff outside of school, your schooled friends and you? Uh, yeah, like in the summertime, but like in school, we're always doing homework and stuff, so we don't really have time. Outside of school. You're not really getting yeah. the socialization much anyway here, right? <laughs> You're like five no, minutes really. saying hi in the hall. Looking, yeah, pretty much. Right. Uh, yeah, well, most teachers tell you that you're not in school to socialize anyway, so it's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I've, I've seen that meme. It's like, yeah, you yeah. got to let your kids go to, to, to school because they need socialization. And then you see the big mean teacher and she says, this isn't about socialization. This is about learning or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so for my kids, just to answer your question, um, they, they have free range with any technology. So a lot of times they'll Skype their friends. Um, Tiffany took dance classes for a while, so she would connect with her friends there. We travel a lot. And so I, I think when, you're, when you start to immerse yourself in the unschooling community and peaceful parenting community and you go to events, I think like facilitating that for your kids, like, taking Nila to Anarchapulco, for example, like a huge event, and there's going to be a lot of kids there, and you have her connect at different anarchist events or unschooling events and make friends in that community, then you start to kind of branch off and realize that, you know, friendships can be maintained no matter where somebody lives in the world. So I think that's one thing our kids have is they have friends all over, and so do we. But I know it's a big jump from having those intimate friends locally, you know, that you see every day. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 It's, 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 uh, we were just at an event, weren't we, Neela? Yeah. You want to talk about what you experienced at that event? Because it, so it, it was an event that Dana was at. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, what? We, di we didn't see your talk, though, because we were, uh. we were, we were doing, we, we were actually, I went with uh, my daughter, Andrew Marich, and I, and we were actually, we, we, were, we were going around taking videos. We, we had a plan. So yep. <laughs> we didn't see the talks. I gave a talk, but I didn't see the talks. So, oh, horrible human being. But it was the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, Neela. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. And what did you, what was it like there? Um, it, was, it was cool. I liked it. Now, I got to film videos. I felt like people didn't, like, hate me there. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> no, well, like that's everyone, always a good thing. <laughs> everyone you walked past, like, said hi to you and, like, I don't know, accepted you as a person because you knew that you can relate to them on some level. So, yeah. That's a really good way to describe it. Um, you know, I say Anarchapulco because it's the most recent large event in my mind, but... It is really different than being in school where you feel like there's only certain people only certain people you should say hi to and certain people you can connect with. When you go to like a big event, you just feel like you're with your tribe, you know, like it's you can say hi to anybody and yeah. connect with anybody. So 
I mean, another great way to facilitate like Neela's interest, for example, is if you love YouTube videos, go to like VidCon, go to bring her to like the different, bring her to as many like huge events where she can connect with people based on her interests, as opposed to the fact that she's the same age sitting next to somebody in the same school. I mean, so it doesn't just have to be, you know, facilitating her socialization with other anarchists or unschoolers. I mean, that's going to, I think, just happen if you decided to, to live this life. But nurturing her passions and bringing her to huge events. Like, like with Ivy, she was really interested in The Walking Dead for a long time. So we brought her to like Walker Stalker, you know, to different big events where she could connect with other people based on what she loved. So, I mean, that's another avenue of socialization for Neela, like and having her find mentors that are YouTubers that are doing it and that she can connect with and really branch off and grow her channel. Yeah. We need to find a Slimer convention. She's really... <laughs> Do they have a Slimer convention at Thank I don't know why. But, but, no, but, but you know what? You should start one. Yes. You know, yes. That, that's, <laughs> you know seriously, you, you, that's... Yes, that's what you do when they have an, an interest or a passion. You start it. Don't wait for one. Like, start it and they will come. If she has an interest in something, you just put it out there and you find a location and have a huge event and bam, tons of people that will love her. And, (laughs) Neela, you you actually were uh, really affected, weren't you? Uh, I mean, I would say that I've seen a transformation. My daughter and I, we have gone through a period of time where I would say things have been tense. Uh, uh, She, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Neela, but you kind of compete with me when I don't want to compete. I'm not, yeah. I, I always tell you, you know, I, I'm happy to have you do better than me all the time, mm-hmm. all the mm-hmm. time. But, and, and there was like this, you, you really didn't want to listen to what dad had to say. As a matter of fact, if dad said it, you were more inclined to not like it. And, and, oh, yeah. and I'm not, I mean, this is kind of a normal thing. It's nothing abnormal. And the only reason I'm bringing up is because after we went to this event, there has been a big change in that relationship. Would you agree with that, Neela? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now she's interested. Now she actually wants to talk to me. Like, she'll come up to huh. me, hey, let's talk. <laughs> like, yeah. about weird, you know, anarchist or whatever uh, uh, kind of stuff. So, so being around people... Uh, I, I, I think that's great advice. And what, what I hadn't thought of, Dana, I hadn't thought of uh, the idea that you could actually start something. That's yeah. A, I mean, that's a great idea. So, I mean, when a, when a group of people get together with the same interest, it's pretty it's pretty powerful. Like just hearing you talk and just sitting here listening to the two of you, I just had the idea to start an anarchist kids conference. I mean, that's something that's never been done. Like, how cool would that be to have that somewhere? <laughs> yeah. And all kinds of... <laughs> so I'm set, like, just brainstorm with people, connect with people that are inspiring and so much will come of it. But from from what you were saying is that, was it just you and Neela at the event at, in was, Michigan? It was myself and Neela and my co-host, uh, Andrew Marich. Uh, he co-hosts with me on our show, Lozilla, which is a show about... Uh, uh, celebrities and weird news. It's a big show about nothing. So, but, well, but, but it was just the three of us. But it was really... Well, now, something that very interesting that happened, uh, which I think mm, something for you to think about, Neela. When we got there, I was under the impression that I had to get my daughter connected to the kids. So <laughs> I, made this, I made this great effort to go and find people with kids. And I found someone with a kid... And it, the kid was her age. I got the connection. And, and the kid that I connected her to, she, she's great. John Smith's kid. She, she's awesome. But as it turns out, it, it, I totally misread my daughter. My daughter did not want to connect to kids. She actually wanted to hang out with the adults because she wanted to be part of those conversations. She was more interested in that. So primarily what she wanted to do was hang out with adults and then go off and make her own videos. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty much what like, she ended wow. up doing. Yeah. Well, it, it, isn't that so funny that you even have some deconditioning to do as a father? Oh, you know, making uh, the assumption, I have a lot. You know? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I find that to be the case with 
with kids and teens a lot. They just want to be part of like what's going on, especially where she had that time alone with you to see what you do behind the scenes and to see what your life is like in a social situation. I mean, she's learning so much from that. And she knew that you were focused on your passion. And it's so awesome to be around people you love when they're nurturing their passions because they're at their best. So she probably saw a side of you that she would love to see more of, I'm sure. Is that accurate, Neela? Yes. Is that an accurate depiction of Ralph? <laughs> so let's get on to the second one. We got socialization. What's the second one? The second. Um, uh, that they're going to end up working, like, and I'm quoting, work because there's nothing wrong with wherever somebody wants to work necessarily, but working at McDonald's flipping burgers. Like, everybody says that to me, that my kids are going to end up working at McDonald's or something like that. And... You know, if they wanted to, if they had that passion and interest, then I would totally support it. So I'm not coming at it from a judgment place. They are not conditioned, however, to take orders and they would not fit in well in that kind of situation where they were just kind of yes men. So, I mean, entrepreneurship, I think, is really natural to unschoolers and kids that have lived their passion and had it facilitated for a long time. So. My kids have had their own businesses. Devin is a blacksmith. He sells knives and swords on Etsy. I mean, so it's a total myth that your kids aren't going to... Sells a, knives your... and swords on <laughs> Etsy? That, yeah. You don't want to just gloss over that <laughs> sentence. That is an awesome <laughs> sentence, right? Yes, he's, yes. he's pretty amazing. And he taught himself how to do it with our facilitation. So... Um, yeah, never underestimate even the smallest little passion that your daughter has because you never know where it's going to grow to be. It's pretty amazing. So, yeah, the, the idea that your kids will be unemployed and be working at McDonald's is a myth. Um, is that, do you have anything you want to add to that or expand on? Neela, do you have questions, follow ups? No, not really. Well, I, uh, I've always told my daughter that, and, and actually I, I was this way before I was an anarchist, and Neela, you could totally call me out if you agree it's, or disagree, it's totally <laughs> fine. Uh, I've always told my daughter, I'm not really interested in what she becomes. I'm interested in her becoming what she wants to become. So maybe, maybe for one reason or another, she may find a way that working at McDonald's is the thing for her. Uh, maybe it's Maybe she'll be a doctor. I don't know. Maybe I'm, uh, well, I mean, honestly, if I have my brother, she would be an entrepreneur. I am an entrepreneur. I, I really don't do well working under others. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just well, not very would, good at it. I would say that Neil, that she's already an entrepreneur. She has a YouTube channel. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. Yes. And she makes YouTube videos. Now she has, she, she, she has over 100 subscribers, which, you know, you know, it's working hard. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. She has over 200 subscribers. But you have, uh, why don't you share with Dana your one uh, uh, entrepreneurial idea that, that you want to explore? There's two of them. I'm talking about the cups. Oh, the mugs. Yes. Yeah, I want to make mugs. Well, not like make mugs, but like draw on mugs and sell them. So, It'll be called Bugs Mugs. Bugs Mugs. That's her nickname, yeah. Bugs. So it would be Bugs Mugs. But, but it, it just just uh, the last couple of days, she's actually been interested in sitting down with me. I make money a lot of different ways, but one of the primary ways I make money is I produce content on websites with ads. People click on ads. I make revenue off the ads. And my, I've actually, I've been wanting to share with her this information. And now she's coming up to me and she's like, she'll, she wants to sit with me and understand how it is that I'm doing what I'm doing. And, you know, this is the thing about unschooling that I really, really love and why really I've, I've been wanting to do unschooling with my daughter now for two, almost three years. It's, uh, the, the idea that people will learn what they need. <laughs> If they don't need it, they won't learn it, and that's okay. When you put them in a school setting, a institutional school setting, what you end up with is your brain gets crammed with all this information that, that you use to pass tests, but it's not information you're applying, so you don't hold on to it. When I was in college, I, I was very good at, 
at taking tests. So uh, I studied everything that I needed to study for chemistry. I had no interest in chemistry. I messed up the bell curve in my class. I was like the top student. I don't remember anything from chemistry. Not, not a freaking thing. All it did was it actually interfered with a period of time that I probably would have put in information that I can actually use. Yep, exactly. I mean, what you just said was beautiful. It's uh, your 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 children are all are all here for different reasons and have different purpose, and we're not all meant to learn the same things in life. So to think that kids need to sit in a classroom all day every day for twelve years and be crammed with the same knowledge thinking that it's education or learning it's not it's just busy work so you know imagine who you would be today and not that you're not an awesome person i am but I've you, met know, me. you know i, I know you I've know you know but right. i mean like if you would have been had the freedom to pursue your passions you know like where, where would you be and so the same is true for for neela if she has the freedom to pursue her passions and learn what she wants it's going to profoundly impact who she later becomes in life and how happy she is because the longer you're in the institution it's like you know slowly boiling a frog you don't realize what's happening to you you don't realize that you're being brainwashed and conditioned to take orders and to live a mundane life and and to you know just just live kind of mediocrity as opposed to what you love to do and so I think it takes great awareness and strength to say and to trust and take a risk and say, I know I have friends here, but I know I'm going to make friends, even better friends, if I leave. And, and like, so say that you really wanted to go and friends were the only thing keeping you. There's no reason you couldn't try it. You know, leave, give yourself whatever time period you need. You can go back anytime. It's not like this is a decision that you can't later say, you know what, this isn't working for me. I really was happier in school. So taking risks in life is something huge and it's scary, but the only way to grow and to change your life profoundly is, or, is to take those risks that are scary because sure things are a lie. You know, you think that doing the same thing is going to ensure a certain outcome, but it's not necessarily true. You could be losing or missing out on something so big for yourself. Imagine if you had like all day every day to pursue your YouTube channel and to like focus on it and grow it and connect with mentors. And I'm just using that as an example, assuming that you love it. You know, um, you, you can make a lot of money on YouTube. I think you need 10,000 yeah. subs. I think you need 10,000 subs now. Don't you to start monetizing? I think so. I have uh, no, uh, you need, uh, certain amount of views i think it's uh 10,000 views is what you need i have yeah it's it's because i know one of my channels i'm a youtube partner and i only have like 200 subscribers but i have a lot of views so i'm a YouTube oh yeah partner. i think that's probably because people can buy subscribers now and so they they don't want that yeah that makes sense yeah. i knew that they made some kind of change in the monetization but um but it's a great yeah it's a but, viable income but, but honestly for me, for where she's at in her life, I feel like even like my daughter loves making YouTube videos, not necessarily to make money. She just loves doing it. And maybe if she thinks that, OK, if I'm pursuing it to make money, it might actually change her. It might not be a good thing. Yeah. But if she's pursuing it passionately, I don't have I have little doubt that she's going to learn stuff that's going to be monetizable. She's going to learn skills. She's yep. going to learn how to manage her time. And there, there's, there's, there's just all kinds of stuff that uh, I'm sure she's going to learn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, I agree. So let's, let's get to the, to, to, the, to the third argument, the third most often used argument for why a child should stay in, in Prussian school. I'm going to say in Prussian um, school. Yes, that that, that. They're, people think they're going to be stupid. You know, basic that your kids are going to be stupid and not know anything and not be successful. Um, again, back to the whole idea that our kids aren't meant to learn the same things in life and they have passions and strengths and um, our kids are anything but stupid. You know, unfortunately, our culture rates stupidity based on poor grades, you know, based on not being obedient. And it's really manipulative, actually, because 
intellect isn't taking orders, you know, but <laughs> you know, you get an A because you did everything that you were supposed to and you memorize correctly and that's valued. So, you know, living the life that we are, I, I won't fall into that trap and my kids um, are happy, you know, and they're, and they're pursuing what they love and being stupid is the last thing <laughs> on my mind and the last thing that they would ever be. And well, yeah. what is stupid? <laughs> I mean, exactly. There's, That's there's, what I was saying in the beginning. Like, right, what, there, is, what does it even mean? I, I think, uh, yeah, there's this, there's different types of, uh, of intellectual ability. My daughter is actually, Neela, you are very good at, at, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. <laughs> yeah. She's a basically a straight A student. And why why do you pursue getting gr good grades? I have no idea. It like pleases me and like does, does it please me? No. <laughs> I'm like, meh, okay, if you enjoy it, okay, great. But other than that, I don't I got D's and F's. <laughs> and I flunked out of high school in eleventh grade. Halfway through eleventh grade I, I yeah. I dropped out of high school. I would have done great with unschooling. I would have totally nailed it. So you don't have me to please. I don't pay you to get good grades, do I? No. Not not even one bit interested in, in reinforcing the pursuit of good grades. I am interested in her learning. Like, but what I'm interested in, I, I, the example that I like to give, that I've given to people uh, who, I, I get a lot of pushback from people who don't want me to own unschool my daughter. Uh, and, and one of the things that I like to talk to them about is how my daughter was behind everybody when it came to reading and writing. And I had some people like, you know, she's struggling, you should get help for her. Uh, I, I, I'm not against getting help for kids if they're struggling with a top subject. I don't, but, but my instinct was I didn't really think she was struggling. I didn't think she really cared about reading and writing. It, it, it didn't meet a need for her. And then something happened along that way. And suddenly my daughter suddenly found reading and writing useful. So she started asking me questions, asking her mother questions. And, and she went in a, in a three or four month period of time, she went from behind everybody to ahead of almost everybody because it was her passion. It, it, it met a need. It was, it was something that she wanted to fulfill. Now, uh, Neela, as you're listening to everything that we've been talking about, do you have, uh, we, we went through the top three uh, arguments that people have for why, why pick school, uh, government school, Prussian school over even just homeschooling, let alone unschooling. Do you have questions for Dana? Just no, I don't know. What, what, I would if I thought harder, but that would like take a while. So, well, well, yeah. well, well, think about what are the, like when you think about what, what kind of decision. And by the way, and I think Dana, you'd agree with me. Nobody's pressuring you here. We're just having a conversation. That's all this is. But what, what would be, uh, I, I think, I don't know, Dana, am I, am I correct? No, that no. Okay. no, it's perfect. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think a child that chooses school is going to have a completely different experience than a child who's forced into school. So oh, the yeah. negative, you and know, she has. And, and she's very, you're very aware of what goes on there and you're aware. I mean, you're, you're probably more aware and educated about what goes on in, in public schools than most kids. So you're not going to be susceptible to a lot of, of things. So you, you have your, your foot, like one foot in each reality, really, you know, you're unschooled in school. Which in a sense, that. yes, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So because you have the freedom to choose, and so how awesome is that? You're choosing it as a tool. I mean, be aware of not getting sucked into the whole idea that you're being compared to other kids. I mean, if you could be in that awareness to know it doesn't matter, you know, where your grades fall, and if you're truly doing it to please yourself, you know, do some self exploration and ask yourself why. You know, why does that make you feel good? Or do you enjoy memorizing things? Is that fun for you? You know, some people really love brain teasers and they love that kind of aspect of life. And if yeah. it's as simple. I, I love memorizing simple, things myself. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it just sounds like it's kind of a light, simple thing for you. And if you know you have the freedom to leave any time, 
school is not going to have the level of damage that it has on kids that are forced there. So you're not even in that category necessarily, you know, so I, I want to respect whatever you choose. So I'm not trying to convince you to do anything. I'm impressed that you're, you know, so evolved for your age that you're on a show like this talking about. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. Now, now with that, with that uh, in mind, Neela, what are, what are, and, and Dana, actually, she's way better a person to ask than me. I mean, I can ask to a certain degree. And actually, interesting, most of what you said, Dana, so far, I think you've, you've already heard from me, haven't you, Neela? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but but it's, it, it's, it's cool that you've, 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 uh, you've uh, I guess, Dana, I'll say that you've backed me up unintentionally. <laughs> but good, good. what are some of your, like, some of your fears and some of your hopes like what 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 is fearful about either decision what is hopeful about either decision i don't really know well okay so if i stay in school that means i can be like a part of the theater and stuff and i really like the like theater and singer director um she's really awesome and i just feel like i'd be letting her down if i left because she really wants me to be part of, like, the more advanced singers group, which I didn't get in this year, but, like, next year, because I got better. And I don't know. She's really helped me, and I feel like I'd be letting her down. But then if I went to school, I'd be, like, letting myself down for, like, more options and things, and I don't know. Uh, well, I'm willing to bet that you can still be in the theater. I mean, any child that's in public school has the right, because your parents you know, pay for it, pay taxes. Yeah, we're you have paying the right taxes. To take, More do we have. You can take as many classes as you want. I mean, there's kids that were homeschooled that I know that went to just gym class and music class. I have friends that do that now. There's no reason you couldn't be part of theater. Yeah. Still. So that is an option. I'm almost 99% sure you'd still be able to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure she can do that as well in Pennsylvania. We're from Pennsylvania, and yeah, you can participate in in extracurricular activities and uh, I, I don't know about the participating in classes part that's interesting but yeah but even what you're talking about Neil uh, the theater and I mean that's all extracurricular stuff that's you want to be in 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 the in the you were in the girls group but now you want to be in the what's it called the, the Northeast, Northeast Singers the, North, yeah, she wants to be part of the Northeast Singers there, so. uh, and and they do have a good a really good music program but inter mm -hmm. interspersed with the music program, they have the Pledge of Allegiance every morning. And what did you remember experiencing something recently, Neela, uh, at September 11th ceremonies and what you guys were practicing and something happened and you noticed it? Would you like to share that? What happened? With the flag. I don't remember what. With the flag. Did the flag, it was when the flag dropped, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, everyone freaked out. <laughs> right? And, yeah. And, and what, uh, what, what, what impression did that leave of you when you saw that? Uh, I don't know. It's like people kind of worship the state almost. So, yeah, that's what I thought. And all the kids are like accustomed to thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when she came home, she was a little creeped out by it. <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. remember it well, but, but she was uh, a little creeped out by it. Now, um, I, I want to talk, Dana, ask you, out, outside of, uh, well, we just had the arguments, you know, what's better for your kid. What about why is unschooling a better choice for humanity? That's a heavy question. Go ahead. No <laughs> pressure. Um, wow, it's so dark in here. I don't know if it looks Oh, really there dark. you go. All right. Good. There, I'm back. How is this um, better for humanity? Well, it's dark in here. <laughs> okay, good so, start. I just was noticing. Um, well, God, I had to fill something in my brain. I mean, that's such a huge question. I it think is. it's better for humanity because it's based in freedom. I mean, how could it not be when children have the choice? I mean, freedom is at the base of everything I do. And so it's really just rooted in freedom. And freedom is always better for humanity. Always. Yeah. Now, I, 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 I call myself, the name of the show is Viz Previs. And Viz means power and Previs means individual. I call myself, I, I made up the word, so I am the only Viz Privacian in the world. Okay? Mm -hmm. Congratulations, me, or whatever that's worth. 
Uh, but basically, I, I believe in understanding the reality of power. And the reality of power, power is basically the way I, I, I term it. Power is the ability to choose and the ability to influence. And we influence in some key areas. There's demonstrated, that is, we, we, we influence people by demonstrating a better way to do things. There's social, whether it's pressure or reward. Uh, Neela, you experience that a lot with maybe the degree to which you pursue getting good grades. And then yeah. there's ideational, and that is the ideas that we have within us that, you know, we, like the idea of, uh, you know, the divine right of kings. That was a powerful idea that, 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 that shackled people. And then, of course, there's, there's force. There's the, 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 the use of force, whether it's defensive or offensive, initiating or non-initiating force. And within that parameter, I see unschooling affecting at least three of those areas. I see, uh, it, I, I believe the more people that actually grew up understanding that they choose their own path and... Uh, uh, unapologetically following that path, so as long as they're not harming others, that is going to break a whole bunch of state-making myths, uh, just in and of itself. And and these are the folks that are going to be the entrepreneurs, that are going to be the ones that are going to figure out uh, alternatives to, to to state services. So, <laughs> from that group, if the more people that are in school, you're going to be seeing from that population more folks who can effectively uh, impact the balance of power between the course of enterprise, individuals, and free associations by, by demonstrating liberty. I say liberty, you say freedom. I like liberty better, but no, it doesn't matter. Demonstrating liberty or freedom. Uh, 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 breaking down those ideational barriers that are that are hammered into most of us that I grew up with, that 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 prevented me from, uh, uh, you know, in two thousand three, I developed this system. I called it a corporate village, a village corporation, and it was basically agorism. But I didn't know what agorism was. But I never even considered removing the state from the equation because it is what it always will be. It, it was never even a question. So for me, you know, uh, for, for uh, unschooling is, I think, one of, the, one of the cornerstones to creating the next generations of, of liberty folks that will make liberty possible for the rest of us. Because, you know, we're not islands. We, we, we I mean... Well, we could be an island, but if you're an island and you stand up and you say, I'm free, all your neighbors are going to look at you and say, oh, the hell you ain't. <laughs> but imagine if you say, I'm free, and your neighbors say, yep, yeah, you are. That's unschooling to me. That's beautiful. I'd love to add to that a little bit if we have time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have uh, about, uh, yeah, I've got about 10, 15 minutes left. Yes. You know, the whole idea of unschooling is educational freedom. And what I educate about is something called radical unschooling, which is like a whole life concept. It's the idea that children, uh, their needs matter just as much as adults needs. And so that's the other whole piece of humanity that's important to talk about here because in our culture, 99% of everything parents are told is to control children, you know, focus on behavior modification, obedience and compliance are the goal. And when you model that for children, if children learn what they live, they then go on thinking that's what you're supposed to do when you're adult. You can, when you're an adult, you control others, you punish others. It's a really, it's a really bad habit for parents to 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 break. And not only a habit, but it's something even bigger. It's a whole role. This whole authoritarian paradigm of parenting is what needs to go in order for world peace to ever come to be. And I know that's a huge kind of utopian idea that world peace could be possible, but I truly believe in my heart and I've seen, you know, examples of this, that it could be possible when we focus on the needs of our kids as much as the needs of the adults, as much as us parents, something changes. Kids see that and they learn that everybody's needs matter, not just those in power, not just the adults, not just the authorities. And when you model that for children, 
their whole lives, they go on knowing that everybody's needs matter. So how does that change how people interact with each other? They, they, it's a partnership based paradigm. And that is between the freedom through education with unschooling, the whole mindset of peaceful parenting is also promoting peace and that everybody matters and everyone's needs matter equally. So that is a huge shift for people. So um, world peace, <laughs> I think we could get closer to that by giving children freedom and not only with their choices with education, but in letting, you know, helping them get what they want in life, not being the wall standing between them and their desires, not being the authority to say yes or no to everything, to say, how can I help you with that? And we might not be able to afford that now, but let's work together toward getting that for you, whether it's something simple like a, a new computer so your daughter can make even more advanced YouTube videos, for example, or, you know, saying yes as much as you can, just like you would with your friend or your wife, your partner, somebody you love dearly. So the parenting, the peaceful parenting side of it is enormous. And yeah, that's something I help people with more, I think, than the educational aspect, because people get the educational aspect in our day and age with all the advancements in technology and the resources that are out there, knowing that children can learn easily on their own with facilitation and support is kind of a no brainer now, but the peaceful parenting piece, that's huge. And um, yeah, it's a well, big deal. Now, Neela, we, we switched to peaceful parenting. I don't know, has it been two years, a year? How long has it been? I don't even know, a little bit over it a year. feels like feels less like than a year oh uh, yeah. I thought, oh it feels like forever no it's like yes, less than a year well, that's interesting but <laughs> what how, how has it been different for you with the well, peaceful I parenting like way not being put in a corner that's fun yes i did that i still don't like the corner of our house though right uh i nice. i spanked her too now i only spanked her four. three times but I have to tell you, those three times was like, you know, you have those awfulest moments in your life thing. Those three times stand out. They're in the top ten of the worst things that I've had. I was, but, but anyway. Uh, I was really young, though. How, like how, 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 has, how has it impacted you? Like, you don't have a bedtime. When do you usually go to bed? Like... Okay, well, on a school night when I actually have to, like, wake up for band and all that stuff, I normally go to bed at, like, 10 or, like, 9. And why do you do that? So I can sleep and not feel horrible in the morning. I never I had to tell her to go to bed early to because she faced the consequences of her actions, uh, which... Uh, I mean, that's one of the things I really love about peaceful parenting, and I, I won't say that I'm... I do peaceful parenting perfectly. I, I'm, I know I don't, uh, but I would say that even for me, my experience with peaceful parenting is my daughter is like you said, Dana. Your kids are just dudes and dudettes. They're just people, and when we create this, I, I had I had an incident with uh, my daughter recently. Uh, I do you want, can I talk about that, Neela? Do you want me to? I don't have to. I don't know what you're talking about, All but right. a couple yeah, of days talk ago. about it. Okay. So I had an incident with her where I felt like she was being pretty mean, rude to me. Oh, just yeah. Talking to me like I was a jerk. And I, my response to her was basically, well, in the real world, when you talk to somebody like they're a jerk, they're going to tend to not want to associate with you. They're going to tend to not want to hang out with you. So I really don't have much to say to you until, you know, maybe you treat me like a human being. And I had this conversation with her. And the thing that, that peaceful parenting does is not only does peaceful parenting make your kid more human, but it makes you more human to your kid. My daughter reacts much better when she realizes that she actually hurt me and made me feel bad than if I were to just snap at her and and discipline her. Is is, is am I speaking that accurately, Neil, or what or, or yeah. missing something? You don't no, you you're not missing anything. You don't like to make me feel miserable, right? No, I don't. I don't like it anyone being miserable. 
and I don't like to see her be miserable, so I tend to uh, modify my behavior. And you find yourself apologizing more. I don't know. You know what I mean, Dana? I, I think yeah. I, I was reading your book, and you were you, you talked about those incidents where you know you did wrong. And since you don't have that parent-child paradigm where you have to be always right and you are the authority, you're not giving up a lot by saying, dude, I was totally wrong. I totally hosed that. Yeah, and I think, like, I love hearing that story because you were authentically sharing with her how it made you feel. I think there's another piece, too, that's hard. You know, I, I think having, the, you know, the, our kids have hormones that are raging and they have to act perfect in their minds around, like, say that Nila's in school, she has to act a certain way around teachers and friends. And when she comes home, it's like this release where she just can be like, Bleh, like out on those who love her that will hold the space for her grumpiness. And so I think that's another piece important to pull in that like sometimes that does happen. Tiffany oh, yeah. out of all of yeah. our kids that it, that it happens and just, I try to picture them talking to me with like the sweetest voice sometimes, but it's, <laughs> it's hard. I mean, I've definitely said things similar where I've brought it to Tiffany's attention. I say, Tiffany, it's Ivy too. The, the boys seem to be so much mellower when it comes to that. The girls, it must be a girl thing. It's like, it's a girl thing where I'll be like, do you realize how you sound right now? You sound so mean. Are you, are you intentional? Like, are you trying to be mean? And she'll be like, no. And I'll, and I'll say, well, you really sound like you're being, like, what's going on? And she'll be like, oh, I didn't even realize it. Sorry. So sometimes just asking, are you mad at me? Are you intentionally trying to make me feel this way? And that can kind of jar jar people, you know, not only Neela, but anybody. <laughs> sometimes they, we don't know how bitchy we sound, do we, Neela? We have no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and and I I sometimes I don't always sometimes I'm actually having my own bad day, so right. when she snaps right, at me, right. my instinct is to step back because you know what I have a million things hammering me right now. Okay? Oh my god! Yes. Yes. <laughs> so. Yes, I I have a funny funny story. I'm a peaceful parent and I'm a voice for this, but it's not always unicorns and rainbows. I mean, we're real people and my daughters and I get along really well, but recently we were in New York City and our car broke down in the Bronx. I hit a boulder and the engine like died. And we were at a gas station trying to get it fixed. We ended up having to stay in a hotel in Connecticut and we were losing it on each other. Like I wish I would have recorded it so people could have heard. It happens so very rarely, but we were like screaming. And it's just sometimes when you're very attached to somebody and you and Eli are, are close and attached and connected, your energy, you just start mirroring each other's energy. It's really hard to maintain yourself when one person's at one level because you just automatically, just because of your connection and closeness, you just meet each other there. So um, at the end of my our breakdown as mother and daughters, I just said, guys, let's just forget. Let we all get a free pass. <laughs> let's just, let's just. I said, let's shake the etch a sketch and forget all of that happened. Let's have a good night. Let's. I'll order you guys some vegan pizza in the hotel, and we'll just like watch a movie. And so sometimes you just look at each other and you're like, free pass. Forget, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. I I understand. <laughs> yeah. Now I I am I'm trying to implement now. I, I, this is where peaceful parenting is very difficult for someone like me because I am a person that needs to feel like I'm in control. This is, this is my natural self. I don't believe it was just at school indoctrination. I believe it's part of my nature. I'm a mathematical type ordered person. So I like to know where everything is. I like to have predictability. So I like to, to, pre, to, to uh, create a... Uh, I, I guess I, I like to create predictable patterns, and that is not peaceful parenting. <laughs> so that's I, I, not 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 as I understand it. But like, so one of my takes with Neela has been, hey, all you got to do is if I say if you if you snap at me, and I say to you, Neela, why are you or why? Are you, and actually, I have done that. Neela, do you mean to sound mean to me right now? Is that? how you want to come across. And I've, I've, I've said to her, we're actually going to try this. Hopefully this will work, Neela. And actually it works both ways. I want to be able to do it too. And that is, listen, today is asshole day. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. It's asshole day. And I'm like, okay, cool. I will keep my distance. So 
I don't know if that works into how you would do peaceful parenting, but it is. Well, yeah, I mean, almost word for word tonight with a uh, oh, okay. Tiffany and Tiffany and Joe were in the kitchen, and I don't know what they were talking about, but they were both kind of escalating something, and Tiffany was kind of raising her voice a little bit, getting annoyed, and she said, "Well, Dad, you're being an ass too," and he said, "Actually, I, I am." Like. I forget his exact words, but they both admitted that they were both being asses in that moment. And it just shifted the energy when you acknowledge it and and they let it go. So, it, yeah, I, I think that's important. The other thing that's important, too, when you can, when you're in a good mental state as a parent, focus on the needs under the behavior. I mean, I think it's important to realize that Neil is still young. I mean, she's she's not going to be yeah, able she's to 12. control her. Yeah, exactly. I mean, how many, however old you are, you have all of those years experience on controlling your emotions and you Hasn't still, helped. and you, I was going to say, and you, and you, and you still can't, right? You still right. have, oh, yeah, you absolutely. Still have right, right. So, so understanding that somebody with only 12 years experience at doing it isn't going to be as skilled at it. So focusing on the needs under the behavior and sometimes just ignoring how it came across or ignoring the communication and just focusing on like, how can I help you right now? And letting that roll over you and not getting pulled into that dynamic. Even if 50% of the time you don't meet her energy and you maintain and you hold the space for her, it's amazing how quickly it'll diffuse it yeah, for her. It's good. When you stay calm. So it's a good like Zen practice for you. Like take a deep breath. I have to do that. A lot of times there'll be so much intensity around me. I'll have to just take a deep breath so I don't get pulled into that because I'm a really compassionate, empathetic person. So it's extra hard for me not to get pulled into the energy, but I, yes, I don't. That's me too. I'm very compassionate, yeah. very empathetic, and I absolutely feed off of the energy of others. So when yes, somebody yes. approaches me with firebombs, it's mm -hmm. it's firebombs they can in return. Yeah, we're, so we're, a great, yeah. We're just great, about done here. Practice. I want to I I wrap this up. Uh, first yeah. off, I want to thank you, Dana, for being on our show. Uh, it's, it's, it's awesome to have you on. And uh, Neela, uh, thank you so much for being on this show. I really appreciate you choosing to come all all this distance to be on this show, Neela. I, <laughs> yeah. re I really appreciate it. All the it. way from upstairs. Yeah. All, the, all the way <laughs> from upstairs, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, is, is there, can you give the, our studio audience uh, some closing remarks on, in a nutshell, and 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 we could talk. I mean, peaceful parenting is another topic, but and, and I, it, it's a topic that I've actually covered a few times. But, but for unschooling, in a nutshell, if you if you if you're not doing unschooling now, and you know have never heard of unschooling now, what would you tell the parent to to get them started, to to give them the motivation if you could to get started, and why that would be beneficial. I mean, my number one question would be, does your child want to be in school? What does your child want? That's the first question that you ask is, are they happy there? Do they want to be there? Would they rather have more freedom? Would they rather be home or out in the world? You know, so so that would be where you start. If the answer is, no, your child's not happy in school and they would like to be out, I would start. I mean, obviously, I have a lot of content I can share with you. You can start on my Sparkling Martins channel. And there's, I have about 50 plus videos about what radical unschooling is. So that might be helpful just to hear different interviews and TV stuff that we've done and learn about it that way. Or you could go to my website and there's dozens of articles and videos on there, hundreds in fact, <laughs> that you could read more about it just as a resource to see if that particular way of going about life is for you. So, and also you can just message me anytime. I get dozens of messages and I'm, a lot more accessible than people think. So drop me a message. I'm happy to schedule you in for either a private like coaching session or I can have a quick chat with you if that's not something that you want. And I can point you in the direction of other unschoolers in your area. See, I think that's so important to find community and find people that are doing it. And there's people, we have a group Neela, on you Facebook. were nodding at that, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. Yes, she'd be very yeah. interested in that information. If you know any Pennsylvania unschoolers, hook us up. You're, we're, we're friends I do. On I Facebook. know many. I so, know many Pennsylvania unschoolers, so, actually. So, so hook us up if you can, because yes. we're, we're okay. friends on Facebook. You can message me. I'm also Thank accessible. You. People don't realize how accessible I am. <laughs> anyway well uh, that's funny people don't people don't just message people because they think they don't want to bother them it's really sweet they don't want to bother them and they think that they 
they would never respond. But I mean, we're all just people and we all I'm doing this because I want to help people. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. And if I can't help you, I will point you in the direction to somebody who can. Yeah, because in the at the end of the day, I want to be able to stand up and say I'm free. And I want my neighbors to look at me and say, yeah, you are. Because right now they're not. <laughs> they're ready to call the cops because I made a little bit too much noise for them. That's the world that we live in right now. Neela, do you have yeah. any last things that you want to say to uh, our studio audience and to Dana and or to um, Dana? Not really, no. I'm definitely, like, leaning a lot more towards unschooling now, though. And you have been for, like, the past, I don't know, three, four weeks, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, but remember, it's your choice. And like Dana said, it's either way, whether you choose to go back or whether you choose to stay, it's not a permanent decision. Even if you go back, I could still get you out later on, anytime. I think it's important to realize that you don't know until you try and to make a truly informed decision, kind of need to try both ways to be able to make a truly informed decision with anything. So don't be afraid to give it a shot and don't be afraid to say, I'm not ready. It's okay if you're not in that space yet yeah. to, to give it a go. So it's it's all good. We Everybody respects whatever you decide and you're totally supported. And I want to send me your, the link to your YouTube channel so I can check it out. Oh, I'll, I'll send it to you then, yes. I, I promote her stuff all the time. I will send you Tom Tuesday. No. Tom oh Tuesday is, is awesome. She does a lot of great things, but for me personally, for my taste. Why is it Tom Tuesday? Hey, Tom Tuesday. <laughs> here. Oh, he's hilarious. He's hilarious. Tom Tuesday will teach you how to start fires. And what was the other one? Play a ukulele. Those are the two yes. videos she made. I, Play a guitar. I'm <laughs> trying to gently nudge her to make more. Only because I love them. I just want her to create those Tom Tuesday videos because I really, really like them. So, but is it a persona? Is Tom Tuesday like a persona? Well, she does. She's a webkin, so she does webkin. Oh, I don't think okay. I have him here, though. Oh, it's you don't have Tom Tuesday accessible. You have a, 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 you have a webkin with you. Who do you have with you right now? Tramp, and then there's. I have no idea. I forget her name. Uh, so, oh, and then there's Tracker. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Tracker has been with yeah. her in one way, shape, or form. Tracker has been with her since she was like, I don't know, a preschooler, like, I don't know, four, three, four yeah. years old. You but found he's the like transformed a lot. Yes, he has. He, he goes through <laughs> body transformations. But you, 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 I think it was at a goodwill when you were like three or four when you, when you got the first yeah. iteration of Tracker. And he's like, he's like, He's like the, the head honcho of stuffies is what he is. So mm -hmm. I, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with us here with uh, Dana Martin. And Dana, again, we could find you at, is, did you say DanaMartin.com? Is that? Yes, D-A-Y-N-A -A yes, yes. Martin.com. D-A-Y-N-A uh, Martin.com. And Dana, I'll also let you know, um, I will be, I'll download the video from uh, Facebook. I'm going to put it up on YouTube. You, I, I usually record. I forgot to record while I was doing the YouTube show. So, But I have it on YouTube, but Facebook. But So I'll have to download it. But when I do, you could use this video. You could use parts of this video. Matter of fact, anybody else can. It's BIPCOT, no gov license. So as long as you're not a state of state face, if this content is free <laughs> for reproduction or whatever, uh, anything you want. And uh, I'll... I'll uh, I, I want to give a uh, to our regular audience that, that that follows the shows that I do. I let you know that next Tuesday, we uh, Lozilla. It's been we took a little break with Lozilla. Lozilla's coming back next Tuesday. It'll be on the Napa TV Facebook page. Andrew Marich, aka Bodie, and I will be talking about weird news and celebrity news because it's all about the lulls. So we'll we'll see you then. And uh, Viz Previous will be on. Uh, next week, I don't. Uh, I, I, we we may have uh, Donnie Geber, Ge Gebert back on. I don't know if you've heard of Donnie Gebert, Dana. He's the one that's doing no. the. Uh, it's I, I forget what he calls it, but basically it's a blockchain congress, <laughs> where everybody is basically a congressman. <laughs> It's, oh, that sounds interesting. Oh, it, it's really, really fascinating what he's working on. So we'll probably wow. have him on next week. And we, we, we've got some other folks lined up. We're still working on getting James Weeks and Cal Molinay on with Bowie and I uh, to debate uh, 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 property. 
So <laughs> that ought to be interesting. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you again, Dana. Thank you, Neela. And be sure, Neela, what's the name of your YouTube channel? I, I got to ask you, where do we find you? Thank you. Let's get your promotion out. I'm Polaroidkins. Polaroidkins. Po Polaroid. And then Neela underscore bug on Instagram. So, so check her out. She's a rising star. She's a rising star, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll see you when we see you. Thank you, everybody, one and all. Bye. Bye.